Thanksgiving week has descended on Baltimore. There's a crisp chill in the air. November football is well underway, Sarah. It's week 12 of this NFL season. It feels as if the Ravens haven't played football in like a month because of the mini buy in the Thursday night game against Cincinnati that now has them in the driver's seat, as we discussed earlier this morning on the vault. But uh, lots to discuss and an impromptu surprise. I don't think we really told anybody this, that we're having Roquan on, and he's coming on in just a few short minutes. Yeah, no, I mean, we we thought we might, but we never can get everything pinned down to last minute. But, uh, yeah, we, we got him, and as usual, he's a great listen. As usual. Before we get into it, this one is, as always, exclusively sponsored by our friends at CyberTech, a next-generation local recruiting, resourcing, and outsourcing firm, a new way to acquire resources. Whether you're in need of new hires, contingent staff, or just seeking to outsource a business or technical function, CyberTech is the organization for you. If you're in need of resources and candidates and don't have the time to sift through dozens of resumes, CyberTech is a company that really understands your needs and presents candidates that are not in the open market within 48 hours. CyberTech has over 40 years of combined experience in working with some of the largest organizations, both in the Baltimore area and nationally. So if you're interested, you think you might be a good fit, you'll have a chance to meet myself, Sarah, and the CyberTech team for a virtual introduction. That is a virtual introduction. And you can get started today by scanning the QR code that we have in the upper right-hand corner right there. And as usual, if you're in the audio-only space, you can send an email to the address that we have included in the top of the show notes below. And thanks to CyberTech for believing what we're building. So this one was a good one. We had a lot to discuss, too, because the hip drop tackle has taken center stage in terms of the debate, whether or not it's intentional, unintentional. Logan Wilson, will it be banned? The NFL studying it back to 2022. Mark Andrews' season being over. Like, I thought Roquan gave some good perspective on that. He clapped back at Cincinnati about I have to throw all the talk, PQ, and everybody going back and forth on Twitter. So anything else that you think stood out? No, I think we should just jump right in. We're jumping right in. Here's Inside the Vault with Agent Zero, Roquan Smith. All right, before we get into the conversation, it's the mini buy, Sarah, as you know. And, <laughs> and here's Agent Zero on his balcony, chilling, post-W. And let me just read the caption before we go to the source in terms of how the heck he came up with this thing. Not everything is as it seems, and not everything that seems is. All right, welcome back in. Where did this come from, and uh, what was your mini bye week like? Oh man, the mini bye week was pretty was pretty sweet to say the least. Got you know definitely coming off the dub with Cincinnati, and got a chance to see one of my really good friends up in um, New York and whatnot. So that was always good. But uh, the caption, yeah, it was like me and one of my really good friends. I was trying to think of something like, you know, that was deep, but wasn't like, but was surface level as also. And it was just more of like, you know, not everything. And it's like people say it all the time. Not everything is just like as it as it seems, because it's not, it's not. Some things may seem like things may be going this way, that way regardless in someone's life or whatever the case may be. And, but it's never, it's never as bad, as bad as you think. And it's never as good as you think. And I just like to make deep thoughts sometimes. So you kind of caught me on the spot with that one. <laughs> I like it. Look at the well, comment section, favorite, Sarah. Look at this. Yeah. The comment section, OBJ calling you Morpheus. That was my favorite right there. <laughs> I love Pat Ricard. I thought this was opposed to Denzel. I mean, look at this. Look at the pants, too. Look at how slick this guy's looking. I didn't even know you had that in you, Roquan. You know, from time to time, got to keep people on their toes a little bit. <laughs> That's right. Well, speaking of, you know, online activity, I was getting a kick out of what was going on with uh, Jermaine Pratt. I don't know where he's coming from. He, he, he went after Skip Bayless for saying that Lamar played well. He comes in there being like, yeah, he only looked good because nine got hurt. So PQ makes logic out of the situation saying, you know, you guys still got cooked on defense. I don't know what that's got to do with Lamar cooking you guys on defense. Anyway, this back and forth, and he says, I'm just going to send Pat Ricard after you to send you back on the bench where you, where you, where you uh, belong. <laughs> so what do you make of Jermaine Pratt and the nonsense he was he was spewing online? Yeah, you know, it just sounds like a bunch of excuses if you ask me, you know, 
Could you, we could have said that last year when um, Huntley, um, when Lamar wasn't out there and whatnot. So it's about, you know, are you in the excuse making business or are you in the result making business? And I'm more so in the result making business, regardless of who comes out there, whether that's nine, six or whoever the case may be. It can be Zach Taylor, you know, <laughs> so it really it really don't matter who's out there quarterback. But, you know. Uh, feel for the guy Joe. Wish him a, a speedy recovery. You hate to see people uh, go down with uh, serious injuries, but at the end of the day, it's part of the game that we play. It's a very physical game. So, but it sounds like an excuse for me, and I guess that makes him feel better. If you ask me, <laughs> I hate that some of your post-game comments were taken out of context. This drives Sarah and I nuts when creators or people on Twitter snap certain little clips, right? And try to pin different things against people. And so people in Cincinnati were were acting as if, I don't know, Sarah, what's the best way to describe it? Like that, that Roquan was was trying to drag Cincy after Burrow went down. Like what's the best way to describe what, what we watched? Well, they, they took your, your Amazon crime, Prime content, uh, comments and you said, sometimes that happens when you play against this defense, but we wish him the best. And you went on talking about how you wish him the best. They cut out the wish him the best huh. and made it seem like maybe it was done on purpose or that you're happy about it. I mean, it's all it's all ridiculous. It's just narratives. Yeah, that's what it, it all – you know how that is with people when they don't have anything else to type about. Uh, their team lost, obviously, and then – you know, with losing a guy like him, so they pretty much know that, you know, the season is not in good standings anymore. And when you're just looking for things to say, you know, people come up with those things. But I wish no ill on anybody. I just – I know our defense is very physical too. And, you know, we like to lay our mark by any means, but we want everyone to go home to their family safe at the end of the day. But between those lines, we come in. It's crazy too. It's like Jermaine Pratt's sure. – like Jermaine Pratt says something like that, right? What kind of message does that send QB2 in Cincinnati as a teammate? You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't understand that. Like like you said, you guys were riding with Snoop, win, loss, or draw last year, and dang it, it was inches away from going on to the divisional round, right? And, like, that's a QB2 in this league who is capable of winning football games. So, it's just, I can't, from a teammate standpoint, that was the first thing I thought of. Yeah, just that just shows you no, no faith in him, you know, and I think that's, that says what it says, and it takes no rocket scientist to know that. But, hey, that's what, those are the words he chose to use, and that's how he viewed, you know, the situation. So it's his opinion at the end of the day. So, Ro, I've got some questions. So I'm hoping you can um, educate us a little bit this morning. Um, you probably saw it. Like the hip drop tackle has been talked about nonstop because that's how um, Mark Andrews was hurt with Wilson tackling him. Um, then I guess a version of that was also used with Wilson on Lamar. Bobby and I both came out of that game saying, you know, that didn't seem dirty to me, just seemed like, you know, a tackle. And obviously you hate to lose Mark Andrews and all that. But then I was kind of swayed a little bit the next morning. So I thought, no, 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 no big deal in terms of how he tackled them. And the next morning, Bart Scott, a former Ravens linebacker who, you know, I respect a lot, said that the hip drop tackle is a dirty tactic. He wasn't going after Wilson saying that he, you know, injured Mark Andrews on purpose, but called it a dirty tactic, which surprised me as a defensive player. I thought all defensive players would be like, no, we should be able to do that. I guess, number one, what is your opinion on the hip drop tackle? Um, and obviously it's legal now, but do you feel like, it should be banned because that's what Bart Scott was arguing for. Oh, uh, yeah. First and foremost, yeah, with the guy Mark, man, you know, hate that, hate to see something like that versus a guy who I have like a great deal of respect for well before I got here and now even playing with him, have even more respect, just like his warrior mentality, the way he go about his day, the way he willing to push through whatever the case may have be, been or whatever the case may be. And like just what he'll do and put it all on the line every given second of the game, not just every game. But uh, yeah, so definitely hearts uh, out with him. And uh, with the hip drop tackle, honestly, I don't, I haven't really seen it a lot. Like I'm sure if a player, like purposely knowing if like the league knows that like it's a high high injury rate tackle like I never personally do it because I'm never like I'm never really just trying to grab someone from behind and like bring them down I normally face people or you know coming from the side or something like that so it's not something that's really into my game and that's what that's what I can speak on from it but I, I really don't know enough about it 
But I see, obviously, there's injuries, even with the guy in college. I've seen that as well. Like, over the weekend, someone sent it to me. So I definitely don't think it's, you know, the proper proper way to tackle. But I know what a d- defensive players are taught, you know, get get somebody down by, like, any means. So, you know, you hear those those things as well. Like, if somebody's going to you trying to prevent a touchdown, like, you're, you're going to do, like, whatever you – think it's best so I haven't really watched the play much if I'm being honest because I try not to like look at stuff like that but I don't know if the guy uh I don't know the guy as being a dirty player I haven't heard of him being a dirty player and I'm sure you know personally how I think about it like I never really truly go into the game hoping that I'm hurting someone you know so they're not able to finish the game or not able to finish their season because that sucks and um I'm sure if he thinks like that, I'm sure which he's not like, then that would be a pretty, pretty horrible, pretty horrible choice decision uh, to make. So, you know, I'm not sure too much. I haven't really watched the replay on it, though, but it definitely sucks just losing a guy like Mark. And then I've heard about the hip drop tackle. So it sucks for sure. So if it were if it were banned, it wouldn't really affect your game because you don't do it anyway. So you wouldn't like you wouldn't be too upset if it was banned because it sounds like the competition committee is looking at it and it's possible that it could be banned over this next off season. Yeah, no, like it, it wouldn't bother me one bit uh, if okay. it was banned or not. Like, yeah, if it definitely helps keeps the players safe, you know, I would definitely uh, support it. But. I, I can't even think a time in my career where I've I've tackled like that because I like to face things, put it look at it right in the face and know know exactly what I'm hitting or like you know let my opponent know you know that I'm hitting them as opposed from dragging them dragging them more so from behind and dropping your weight or whatever the case may be. So yeah, it's 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 not it's not it's not clean in a sense. I guess just for that educational piece for those of us who haven't played at the highest level, do you knowingly? In that moment, I mean, this, these are high-speed car crashes, essentially, that happen on every single play, right, on an NFL field. Do you knowingly use the hip drop tackle, or is this just something that happens in, in a, again, a high-speed moment where you're just trying to get a guy down? I think I think it's more so of just trying, trying to get a guy down. And it's hard for me to speak for it, like, wholeheartedly because I've never really done it. So it's kind of hard for me to put myself in that mind state of doing a hip drop tackle when like that's not, not a part of my game or how I how I address the ball carrier so I think more so an individual that's actually you know doing it can more so give you a better explanation behind it because it's something that they do in their game yeah. but I know from a defensive perspective though like you know you talk like get get someone down and you know maybe that's the something what someone revert to or you know or just like by any means just trying to pull the guy down and it somehow it happened so I don't know honestly all right, so Ro, my favorite thing coming off of the the well, one of my favorite things coming off that win was you and PQ on the dub cam. I know Cassie Calvert's back there getting you guys. You you got a lot of uh, attention from Ravens fans. They love this one when you came on. Big dub, baby. We got Ro right here. He's not in a good mood, so we're just going to exclude him from this. Yeah, we didn't finish the way we needed to finish. Right. But guess what? Bye, Cincinnati. And Sarah, on top of that, in that prime post-game interview, you called it inexcusable what happened there at the end, right? The Jamar Chase, I hate to use the phrase garbage time, but people, whatever, in the media use it as garbage time, even though the game's never over till it's over. But when it was out of hand, let's call it that, right? When it was out of reach for Cincy, they got a touchdown, Jamar Chase. So uh, what was your message to the team? And 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 how do you find a way to to find that inner dog in you, even though things are clicking right now and you're beat a team, you just swept the season series with a division opponent and you're sitting in the driver's seat right now division-wise. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the broom is out, I guess. <laughs> and it came to uh, town Thursday night, you know, so that was pretty sweet. But uh, yeah, at the end and like um, we're taught, you know, from like with Mike and company um, and everybody uh, on staff, you know, you you go into there's no more life uh, left in left in the opponent. So more so in football terms speaking, like you keep going into the last whistle, like regardless of what's going on, you don't allow an opponent to actually come up and breathe when you actually have them exactly where you want. Like they come up for air, you take them right back down in a sense. So thinking with like that kind of mindset and knowing how our defense thinks, like we have to finish those plays if we want to be the best defense that we can possibly be. And I think that's it more so in a nutshell. So, Ro, um, so that's one thing I know that you guys have a goal on. Um, 
the Ravens defense is ranked top five in just about every single category. I was just looking into it today. But if there is one area of improvement, I'm sure you already know this, it's probably that rush defense where you guys are number 13 right now. I know, I know you guys are capable of way more than that. And I also feel like you have the personnel to do it. What do you think needs to, needs to, it's really like the last two weeks. I know Mixon got some and then Brown's kind of at the end there. What do you feel like needs to be tweaked in order to bring that rush defense up to your guys' standards? I think it just goes back to uh, fundamentals. Honestly, uh, we just got to home back in because, like, obviously we've pro proven it before, but it's not about proving something before in this league. It's about how weekly can you – how often can you uh, prove something over and over. And I think that's something, like, I say often, like, each guy got to look themselves in the mirror and it more so starts with uh, the front seven, us up front, uh, being able to do what we do, beat blocks, you know, strike guys, knock back uh, tackles and things of that nature. And when you look at it over – the course of the uh, last couple games has been a couple plays, but at the end of the day, it's a couple plays in this game that can really determine the outcome of any game. When you look at it like that, that's just something that we have to uh, improve on. And trust me, like each and every guy knows. And as far as the defensive line and the linebackers, we, we take that uh, personal that, you know, it's not up to our standards. So we're definitely, you know, thinking about that and uh, making it our business to get better at it. I enjoyed this specific play individually. I mean, look at what Zero did to Joe Mixon here on the left-hand side of the screen. And Joe was just doing what his job is in pass pro. I got a lot of respect for actually what he did here. I mean, you got a pretty good Roquan, but his he did his job in this moment, right? But uh, walk us through this play because this was fun to watch. You did not miss. Yeah, no, that one was pretty sweet. Uh, yeah, basically like a, a pressure. I was coming – uh, coming from the uh, strong side of the field, and I guess they five over it with the lineman, and then uh, had him on the slide protection while he was accounted for whichever backer uh, was blitzing. And yeah, it kind of got me a nice little head of steam about a five yard head start, and then he was com coming, and then I thought about maybe m more so working a move, but yeah, I was a little pissed off on that three yard uh, touchdown, three four yards, whatever the case may be, when I got out leveraged. Uh, out to the flat, so I was just like, ah, oh, let me just see see what his chin's about. So that's what I, I checked it out. You absolutely trucked him. I re I watched that like five times. I was like, could you imagine Joe's having to stand too, your Sarah. ground? Like, Joe's built. Yeah, I mean, he's no, he's not like this five eight DB or something nickel corner. Like, I mean, he's a, yeah, but he's just got to stand there and get ready for this train to come through. <laughs> that was you just you just trucked train him. zero. Um, yeah, train zero. Let's just keep giving you nicknames here. Um, so uh, about the time that you guys were in London, I don't think we ever asked you about this, and I was like, you know what, we got to get this in before we're too far down the road. But Nadamna Kasu was interviewed by Sky Sports out there in London, and he kind of like broke a little news I know here. this was around about the time you signed with the Eagles last year. What's, what's your plans? What's your immediate? Got a thoughts? couple more weeks, so we'll just wait and see. <laughs> <laughs> some, giving breaking, you nothing. some breaking news last week. It was the Ravens that spoke to me. Oh, so okay. Thank they, you. They uh, seem to be interested. They played great today. Oh, so. you like yeah. that? I like their defense. Yeah, <laughs> Lots you do. Of sex. <laughs> How do you not like this defense? So, Ro, here's my question to you. One, have you heard anything about this, about, you know, a potential signing? And number two, would you welcome that? Honestly, I haven't heard uh, anything about, like, a signing uh, and whatnot. But, like, I'm sure, you know, as football fans, and everyone has a great deal of respect for Sue, the way he's played the game uh, for many years. Uh, and, you know, guys, you know, been on winning teams, rings and things of that nature so have a lot of respect for him but that's that was a little bit out of my uh pay grade that's more so upstairs like edc uh and those guys you know it's all of a sudden we're, we're, we're taping this on november 20th and so i think this is your time of year right when the, that that air starts to get crisp the focus is about as narrow as it can possibly get to quote john harbaugh right so from a mindset standpoint what changes for you this time of year as you guys start to really kind of hone in on taking this division over the next two months or so. Yeah, honestly, man, like right now, week 12, whatever the case may be, um, it's like guys, each and every guy right now, it's like 
the games count double almost, you know, this where teams are, you know, either sliding into playoffs contention or like sliding out of it. So it's more so like each and every game is uh, very important, regardless if it's division or not. But like in the division games, like which I think is the toughest division in football, they mean they mean a lot. And we just have to, you know, keep churning uh, one game at a time and we're shifting our focus out here to uh, L.A. before we can get back to any division because I think that team is uh, really good as well. Do you change anything about off-field play, the way you the way you cool down, the way you – the day after games, the way you kind of, like, treat your body? Does anything change or get enhanced over the next few weeks? No, I, I pretty much stay stay the same. I just know normally uh, things, as far as like practice, things get a little lighter later in the season. You know, yeah. guys are going through things injuries wise, so you're definitely hyper aware about everything with your body. So making sure you have to take care of that because that's your uh, that's your bread maker at the end of the day, and that's what keeps you out on the field. So guys knowing that, and I'm sure a lot of guys play play pay close attention to that as well. All right, Roe, we'll get you out on this. It is Thanksgiving week. Get some good food going on. So here's here's my question. What is the best Thanksgiving dish, and which one should be banned because it's so bad? Best Thanksgiving dish, and which one I think should be banned because it's so bad. I would say the best, the best one is probably dressing with, like, cranberry uh, put on it. And uh, like baked mac and cheese is pretty good too. Uh, so, but I'm gonna just leave it at those two. And then, far as uh, which one I think should be banned, wow, that's an interesting one. Uh, I would probably say the name stuffing. <laughs> no stuffing, because you gotta take, you gotta keep it light this week. Yeah, yeah, but you know, some say dressing and stuffing is pretty much the same thing. But like, I, I would probably say the name with stuff and like because I, I never really heard of it until uh, i think i got out to the midwest i love it what's hilarious is that you named cranberry as part of your best and i was gonna ban that one like who oh, who wow. eats cranberry sauce it's you like it too bobby no i just didn't know that you guys were opposites oh yeah no I would, <laughs> that's banned in my house i will not be bringing that to my thanksgiving dinner here <laughs> yeah no cranberry 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 is nice with the dressing now i, I gotta give it to it you're clean. You, you're living clean over there. You, this is a, a work week for you. Do you guys have off on Thursday? What do you got going on? No, nah, you know, normally uh, I've done it all on Thanksgiving as uh, far as played on it, practice on it. So I think uh, it's, a work, it's a work day. You know, we have we have things we got to take care of this weekend. So Yeah, yeah. business as usual. You got a, you got a West Coast trip usual. coming up. Yep, it's exactly. All right, Ro. Well, glad you enjoyed your mini bye week. And uh, thanks, as always, for, for dropping in. We'll talk soon. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much. You know, I just can never put any kind of contribution or participation in anything related to food because I have the most sensitive stomach in the history of stomachs. So I'm just over here kind of like on an island where you two are talking in depth. So hope you enjoyed that. Well, I, 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 that's a pretty. So what, what do you do on Thanksgiving? Well, I just I kind of I exist. Uh, I just sort of exist. I got colitis over here. It, it, ain't, it ain't fun over here. Oh you know? my gosh. Jeez, things I'm learning about you after a year worth the stuff you don't know about when you're just a, you know, have a business relationship online. I tell you, so, I had the most bland diet ever. But you know what? <laughs> that's just that's that's the way it was drawn out for me. So Hey, maybe you think? it'll just keep you it'll keep you thin in your in your as you hit the 30s and 40s when your metabolism starts that's right. to slow down, but uh, no, so I, I said this and you know this, I was very, very curious about his perspective on the hip drop tackle. Bobby, I feel like the, the, the that night when the tackle happened, I still don't think Logan Wilson, I'm not going to dub him as a dirty player. Roquan didn't do that. Bart Scott didn't do that. Uh, Patrick. Uh, Ricard actually had a pretty long quote that he gave to Ryan Mink over at the team saying that he's not dirty. So I, in no way did oh, I think he Go. was, yeah, yeah. In no way did I think he was dirty that night. And I still don't think he's dirty this morning. Yeah. That being said, I feel like I am way more open to banning that hip drop tackle than I was that night. Mostly because that night I had no clue about it. It seemed just like a normal tackle, you know, to me. And so, 
it's interesting to me now that you got somebody like Bart Scott, who calls it a dirty tactic, by the way. So not something I'm presuming he didn't use then if he feels like it's a, birdie, a, a dirty tactic. Now Roquan saying, that's not even how I tackle, which I didn't even, again, I didn't realize, you know, uh, these details because I was, you know, we're up at a different yes. vision of, uh, you know what I mean, of a different lens of things. And they're, they're more into the details. So now that Roquan's like, I don't care if they ban it because I don't use it, you know. Again, I do think it would probably most affect somebody like a DB. Like, say it's like that nickel corner that can sometimes be 5'9", and, you know, all muscle, but like 185 or something, and they're trying to, and like the game's on the line, and they just have to drop their weight and try to bring somebody down. I still think it could affect somebody like that, so I'm still open to, to that. I think the biggest thing that would make me nervous about banning it because as Roquan said, if there's major data that that's how people are getting injured and he doesn't use the tackle, then it almost seems like a no-brainer. I think the thing that's probably going to, if it is banned, that will bother me the most is because it'll be another judgment call. And I would just hate to see refs come up with like a phantom hip drop tackle, like the way they came up with phantom PIs the, in, in this last game. And they came up with phantom PIs both ways, so I guess you could say it evened out. But that to me is just like another thing that it's like, Ah, in real time, referees have to make a judgment snap decision on something that could affect the game big time. So that part would bother me, but I guess that's something you live with if it prevents something like Mark Andrews going down or Lamar Jackson even kind of getting hurt on it. Luckily, it wasn't major. Uh, something you live with if if defensive players don't even think it's that big of a deal. And big picture, how are you penalized in that moment if it is banned? Is it just a traditional right. penalty or are you thrown out of the game like Kyle Hamilton was, oh, you know, oh, like back no. in London? So, right. or is it, and is it like a 15 yarder? Like what's right. like how, right. yeah. how, how is it governed one and two, yeah. are you again, putting these human beings at the end of the day, these officials in a position where they have to make snap decision judgment calls to your point. I mean, they already have to do that enough. Yeah. They already have to do that enough. And they already feel as if it seems that they're on that it's it's so it's so not black and white that you're putting these guys in a really difficult spot and so being that we we learned last week that they are already studying data back to 2022 like you said and they're seeing what 25% or somewhere around 20 20 25% of those tackles leading to significant injury you wonder if this is where we're headed yeah yeah definitely definitely do the other thing that i really liked from Roquan um I mean, it was fun to kind of talk about like <laughs> him talking about his excuse making business with Jermaine Pratt, which is, which is exactly. And it's also like when people clip his, his quotes and try to make it seem like he's dirty. I think that's just people being salty. But the other thing that I uh, thought was interesting is when I was asking him about, you know, being number 13 in rush defense. And he's like, trust me, trust me. We know, we know. And we are not happy about it. And, you know, I didn't expect him to because nobody on this team really throws one another under the bus. Coaches don't do it to players. Players don't do it to coaches and they're not going to do it to teammates. Um, but you know, I, I would love to know one of these days, like his true feelings, not that we could broadcast it. Cause again, he's not going to throw anybody under the bus, but I had said in that post game show that I felt like if the front, he, he said it's us in the front seven and it is, but it's also those front defensive tackles where I kept seeing, you know, leaks come through right up the middle and it's a tough place to put the linebackers in to whether, you know, they should like, you know, suck up quickly because these guys are going to make it through and you don't want them to get an eight yard run. Or can you trust them a little bit and like kind of drop back if needed in, in, in coverage. And so um, I imagine that's all part of the equation that they're talking about behind scenes. But, I, you know, I wish we could get like a, a, I wish we could get a real diagnosis, but not at the expense of them throwing people under the bus. Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's going to probably be left up to an, our own imagination and yep. interpretation, but fair enough. And I also liked what he I kind of followed up with the whole Pratt thing, right? The Jermaine Pratt thing. And I was like, what what message does that send your QB to? And, and, and yeah. he was straight up saying, listen, that's telling. He pretty much yeah. said, like, yeah, you're telling this guy you don't believe in him. And yep. so I just that's a culture thing like that. Come on, man. Like you, you don't think that at five and five a wild card spot is, is not available with less, a little less than two months to go in this season. Come on, man. Like you, you there's yes, we get it. 
The team is very different without Joe Burrow, and the team's very different than it was a year ago. We talked about a lot of the changes with Jay Morrison last week in the back end and the safety, right? With a, a bunch of guys leaving a free agency, Von Bell and Jesse Bates. So they're young on the back end. But I don't know. That that tells me that would not send a great me- a locker room message if, if I'm in that if I'm if I'm Jake Browning. Let's just say no, that. Yeah, and that's and that's what's like you're kind of in the moment trying to like make excuses and be like, you know, we we wouldn't have gotten swept in this and that, not realizing what you're saying overall. So I don't know. Maybe at least I hope he didn't realize that he was taking a shot as his number two. No kidding. Shout out and a huge thank you to two of our returning patrons who are supporting everything we're building here inside the channel through Patreon this month. Sharu Hashmi and Greg McCarthy. Thank you both for believing in what we're building here in Baltimore and beyond. And a huge thank you to Cybertech, who's the exclusive sponsor of this Inside the Vault program with Roquan Smith, as you heard at the top. They are a next-generation local recruiting, resourcing, and outsourcing firm, a new way to acquire resources. Whether you're in need of new hires, contingent staff, or just seeking to outsource a business or technical function, Cybertech is the organization for you. If you're in need of resources and candidates and don't have the time to sift through dozens of resumes, Cybertech is a company that really understands your needs and presents candidates that are not in the open market within 48 hours. Cybertech has over 40 years of combined experience and working with some of the largest organizations, both in the Baltimore area and nationally. So if you think you'll be a good fit, hop on the phone. You'll have a chance to meet myself, Sarah, and the Cybertech team for a virtual introduction. You can get started today by scanning the QR code that is in the upper right-hand side of the screen right now, or you can just go directly down to the show notes where you find an email address where you can directly reach our friends at Cybertech. Big thank you to them for believing in what we're building here in Baltimore. So let's see, Monday afternoon, week 12, we'll have a preview for the Chargers coming up. Guys hit the road for the West Coast. It's Thanksgiving, so we will probably have a little bit of a different schedule this week. But like Rose said, this is a business week for us. It's a business week for the Ravens. That's how we're going to do it. So, yeah, anything yeah, else so from you? Probably what we discussed is the schedule will probably be well, we don't record. So, for those that don't know, I'm sure you guys all do know, we record the morning vaults the night before. So, we're going to take Thanksgiving off, correct? Take Thanksgiving off. So, we won't be recording Thursday night, but we'll still have a preview show for Friday with a guest that we can, we can uh, record earlier. So, we will actually end up having then a morning vault. Thanksgiving morning because we'll 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 shoot that Wednesday night. Perfect. So uh yeah. So we'll have something every day this week, like normal, just to have one less morning vault Friday morning. Perfect. And one follow up note from Monday's morning vault, because it hadn't yet gone final until after we were done recording. Joe Flacco is indeed signing with the Cleveland Browns practice squad. Uh-huh. Uh Schefter is reporting that he's expected to get promoted to the active roster. And so there's going to have some depth. Obviously, there's going to be some depth in that quarterback room. And perhaps, perhaps over the next few weeks, one Joe Flacco is going to have a chance to lead Cleveland to a wild card berth in the same division as he once won the Super Bowl MVP in. So this is going to be something else. It wouldn't surprise me. I mean, think about it. Obviously, they have a very good defense right up there with the Ravens defense, maybe in some categories a bit better. Others, not so much. But you got that defense. And Joe Flacco's used to playing with the defense. He understands like the strategy of, you know, playing to a defense. I feel like he's going to be better than <clears throat> shoot. What's the number two's name? I'm already forgetting. Cleveland's. Yeah. But. Do, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Dorian... PJ Walker. PJ Walker. Oh, PJ Walker. Right. So uh, watching that game, I can see why they signed Joe Flacco this morning. So. It wouldn't surprise me if he continued to get do what he's got to do to get Cleveland to the postseason. And holy moly, if we saw January Joe in January, oh boy, buckle up. So Listen. we'll wait. It's a, it's a far ways down the road, but these are the things you think of when they're signing. So uh, this will be the first time. Like I said, I was rooting for Joe even who was with the Jets and Eagles when they weren't playing the Ravens because I didn't really ever see the Jets as a as a uh, threat. But now that the Browns are just a half game behind, you know, lead in the AFC North, I am not rooting for Joe Flacco these days. <laughs> will not, not wishing any ill will. Love him, love his career, but I am not rooting for him these last few weeks of the NFL season. I'd go as far as to say that 
if the Jets made this move a month ago and signed Joe Flacco, they would there would be a much different tenor surrounding that organization right now, and they'd be highly anticipating Aaron Rodgers' return instead of questioning whether or not it's right to bring Aaron back at this point in his career right. and rather get a full off season of rehab and go after it in year two for him in New York. Right. I'm not right. saying that Flacco, look, he's 38 years old. Clearly his mobility is lacking at this point. I'm not sure it ever wasn't lacking, but we know that he still has an arm. We know that he's a winner. We know that he is experienced. And I'm just saying with like, to your point, what did they hold Pittsburgh to? And I'm not saying the Steelers are a high flying offense. But that Cleveland defense held Pittsburgh, I think, to 10 points on Sunday. So you mean to tell me that Flacco couldn't find they a way to keep, manufacture 13 points? They can keep exactly. plenty of teams below 20. And can can it, and that's always where we were with him when he led the Ravens. Can we get above 20? That's all we need. We need a little bit more than 20. Can he do that? They, they're going to have the same questions we had for years. I think it's a great storyline. I can't wait to watch this unfold because... Who the heck is going to get the wild card in the AFC North, assuming the Ravens continue to get their business done? They're going to have to do exactly that when they head west this weekend to face the L.A. Chargers. Looking forward to that one. Always thanks to Cybertech. Always thanks to Roquan Smith for his generosity and time here inside the vault. And for my co-host and partner, Sarah Ellison, I'm Bobby Trossett signing off from this special Monday edition with Agent Zero. We'll talk to you guys on Tuesday morning.